Fast Boat Swap Keys today. What we intend to do is work with the Congress to find a suitable facility in the United States. Excuse my French, but we say hell no. Hell no. These are residents who live near a supermax prison in Florence, Colorado. Pentagon is reportedly considering that location is a place to house the remaining suspected terrorists held at the Guantanamo Bay Detention Center. ABC anchor David Muir traveled to the detention center to examine that issue for Nightline last night. And we traveled from Hampton Roads, home of the world's largest naval base, to the only naval base in a communist country. Andre Sr. continues his exclusive look with the little-known story of the Cuban exiles who live on the base. At first glance, this could be any neighborhood in the United States. Uh, they kept the, the tropical environment. But this is in Guantanamo Bay, and the people who live in these homes... It's like a piece of Cuba for them. ...are exiles. 400 fled to the base when Fidel Castro seized power in 1959. They decided to stay as Cuban exile. Dana Lake, deputy director of the base's Cuban Assistance Center, oversees the 31 who remain today. They provide for their subsistence, for the social being, well-being, for the medical, and they are happy. Fearful their families will be retaliated against by the Cuban government. And the privacy was because they are Cuban exile. Many like Ramon Baden rarely speak to the media, and today was no different. Mr. Baden is very content doing what he does every day. Call, exercise, pray, and listen to the radio, the Cuban news. He clutches the very radio in this 2015 photo from the Wall Street Journal, using it as his connection to home in Sierra Monera a place he can see, but he can never return to. They're from the close by town. Separated by the barbed wire border and northeast gate, we were the first media taken here in years. We got about 15 or 17 miles of fence line, give or take in there. Marine Sergeant Joyanki Victoria took us on a tour. Oh yeah? yeah. Victoria is one of the many Marines who patrol the border and ironically is Cuban born, fleeing the communist yeah, nation as a child. Uh, he now lives on base with his wife and three children. I feel good because now I get to show my kids what the Cuban it used to, it looks like. It is surreal to be at the Northeast Gate, to see the entrance of Cuba right behind me and to be an eye shot of a tower that the Cuban military often uses to keep an eye on its citizens who may try to escape here onto the naval base. Before the U.S. and Cuba normalized relations last year, both countries rarely spoke, but frequently spied on each other. So you might be surprised to learn that Cubans who worked on the base before Castro seized power from the U.S.-backed Batista administration, they were allowed to continue passing through the gates until the final two retired in 2012. They say very uh, emotional, you know. And since then... I have a monthly meeting uh, with my counterpart uh, outside the gate. Base commander David Culpepper is one of the few still allowed to travel through these gates. He and his predecessors have kept the lines of communication open with Cuban military, even as their respective governments continue to give each other the cold shoulder. We do have an agreement to, uh, to support one another in the event of a, uh, of a catastrophe in the area. Which includes treating injured Cubans at the Naval Hospital. The agreement became a very real possibility of executing when early forecasts put a then Category 4 Hurricane Matthew directly over the base. It sounds like you all are doing a better job than the politicians are at this point, you know, in terms of our countries talking to each other. Well, I mean, you could argue that our task here, arguably, is, much, is a much easier one. Back at the Cuban Community Center, where there are vestiges of old Cuba and a dwindling population, one thing has not diminished decades after the exiles who live here arrived. Well, they have the hope that one of these days they probably could return home. Reporting from Guantanamo Bay Naval Base in Cuba with photojournalist John Goodwin, I'm Andre Sr. They wish they, one of these days they could see this happening. 13 News Now. Every effort is made to make the base feel like home, but there is one thing service members didn't have. It's something most of us use yet rarely think about. Tomorrow on 13 News Now at 6, what finally happened several weeks before we arrived. Now, the certified most accurate forecast in Hampton Roads. Well, we start off with clear skies.